Hey, and welcome to my clip trim slice and knife brush tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use all these brushes along with some other cool tips and tricks. So let's get started. First up, I'll show you how to use the clip and trim brushes. So if you want to use the knife brush, you can skip ahead. But before you do that, let me show you what all these brushes have in common. The stroke type. Now you can change this, but with the general stroke here, you can hold down control and shift to use these brushes. You can also hold down spacebar after drawing out the line to move the line or hold shift while moving the mouse to get increments. Tapping Alt once will create a smooth bezier curve and tapping Alt twice will create a hard angle for you to use. If you want to temporarily go back to the select rectangle, you can tap Ctrl once. By the way, the shadow part of the line indicates which area will be clipped, trimmed or cut. So if you end up drawing an amazing line only to realize the shadow is on the other side, you can hold down Alt and this should reverse it. Although this is not recommended that you do it this way. Speaking of things you shouldn't do, there are a few shapes you can make with the lines that give you unfortunate or ambiguous results. These are the zigzag shapes, the diamond or square shapes, and circular shapes, and some S shapes also mess with your plans. So check them out with smaller meshes before using it on a larger mesh. These types of shapes could crash your ZBrush application. Okay, so first up we have the clip brush, shortcut BCC. As you can see, there are quite a few brushes here, but let's stick with the default. The clip and trim brushes look like they work the same, but the main difference is that the clip brush doesn't actually clip the geometry, it pushes or squashes it really. As you can see, when I clip this face, you can see the geometry just being pushed back. So all the vertices are still there, which means unlike any of the other brushes in this video, you can use the morph brush after you use the clip brush. This is super convenient. Now this functionality of the clip brush is great, but it does come with a caveat. Anytime you push things back, if the geometry is wider than the area it's being pushed towards, the brush will have the outer areas clipping past. Oh, maybe that's why it's called a clip brush. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's the clip brush. It pushes geometry without disturbing the vertex order, but it isn't as clean as some of the other brushes due to its overlapping clipping effect. It's still great for creating curved and square shapes though, so don't throw it out completely. Oh, and before we move on to the next brush, the Clip Circle shortcut BCP has something really cool. If you hold down Alt while using the Clip Circle and the cursor, the middle cursor, is over the geometry, the geometry will be pushed out as opposed to being pushed in. This doesn't work with any of the upcoming brushes, so it's a really cool feature that you might want to use on hard surface mechs or something of that sort. Up next we have the Trim Brush shortcut BTU. Now, this works almost like the Clip Brush, but instead this brush actually slices the mesh deletes the shadow part, then runs a close holds operation to basically give you a newly remeshed area. So unlike the clip brush, any area you trim with this brush will be neatly sliced and remeshed without areas clipping over. This brush is great for control and quick hard surface cuts and trims, but just like with anything, this brush has its caveats. Unlike with the clip brush, if you trim curves into your mesh, the remaining trimmed area might not look like what you want. This is because it's slicing the mesh and then closing the holes with a close holes operation, which does this. So I guess the knife brush is the answer to all this? Yep, but before we go there, let's take a quick look at the slice brush, shortcut BSE. The slice brush does exactly what it says. It slices the geometry on the shadow area and gives you a new polygroup. Now we haven't really discussed remeshing, but if you use this method, you can quickly create separate areas with the slice brush and remesh it to get some clean cuts. This is also a great way to create armored plates really quickly using panel loops. Just go to geometry, edge loop and create a panel loop. Both the trim and slice brush don't work with symmetry, but to negate this you can simply mirror and weld the mesh. Now before we move on to the start of the show, let's quickly look at B radius. This is a great tool to use with all of the brushes actually, and if you hold down control plus spacebar you can select it and this makes use of your focal shift to basically cut, trim or slice a portion of the mesh. Holding Alt will do a cut away, while the default will do the opposite. You can also hide parts of the geometry and do this to create some really cool cuts and shapes. By the way, to change the size of this brush, just change the size of the brush. Don't change the focal shift. That'll just mess with your brush. And here we are, the knife brush, shortcut BKN. So just like the other brushes, we have all the same options, holding Alt, tapping Control, using B radius, etc. But unlike the clip brush, this brush won't start pushing geometry outside of other areas. And unlike the trim brush, it won't freak out when you try to create circular cuts or stair-stepped shapes. On top of all of that, you can use it with symmetry and it will remesh the area you cut with proper topology. 
kinda. There are still triangles, but it's nothing zero measure can't fix. What I would do, by the way, is use group binormals, then remesh to create some really clean topology. And by the way, sometimes your zero measure might not work. So every time you create a cut with the knife brush, make sure your zero measure works before you move on. Because sometimes if you create too many cuts, it can kind of freak out zero measure. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, unlike with all the other brushes, you can use this to quickly create hard surface details and some very clean topology with the zero measure. Now I haven't really talked about the other variations of brushes, so let's go through them. If you go to the stroke menu or you just like the variation of the brushes you want, you can make use of different stroke types. Make sure you hold down Ctrl plus Shift while doing this, else you'll just change the stroke type of the active primary brush. All these brushes we've been using are secondary brushes by the way, so you need to hold down Ctrl plus Shift. As you can see, you can use a lasso, rectangular or even circular variation. But if you want a perfect circle or square, just select the rectangle or square stroke while holding Ctrl plus Shift, then right click on the stroke and select square. This will ensure that your circle or rectangle are equally spaced. By the way, the center option just means that you'll be drawing the rectangle or square or circle from the center. Here's a quick use of the knife brush with some hard surface planes in mind. After that, what I'll do is use the zero measure again to get some clean topology and edges. Oh, and there's one problem with all these brushes, and you've probably noticed it. Yeah, that's right, you can't make any holes with them. In fact, as far as I know, there's no brush that can make holes straight up in ZBrush. Oh, ZBrush, you always know how to throw us for a loop. Anyway, there's a workaround for that. What you can do is create a folder with the mesh you want to make a hole in, insert a cylinder below that, select Subtract on the subtool, Activate Live Boolean, which can be found under Render, Activate Booleans. By the way, holding down Control on any button will show you where it's located in the main menus. And next, you can click on the gear icon and select Boolean folder. And we're done. Oh, and you can remesh it again, of course, for better topology. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But just one quick note. Um, if your mesh does have thickness, what you can do is use the knife brush and it'll slice through it and retopologize it properly. But if you use the trim brush or the clip curve, you'll notice that the topology can get a little bit wonky. So thickness is something you might want to avoid when you're using your trim brushes or your clip brushes. But of course, like I said, the knife brush does work perfectly on this. So definitely experiment with the different types of brushes. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section. And I've also got a bunch of new drawing tutorials coming up. So you guys can look forward to that. So I'll see you in the next one. Maybe it'll be the drawing tutorial. Maybe it'll be another 3D one. And again, yeah, just let me know what you guys think and what you might want next. So yeah, thanks again.